going to pick it up where I left. I will bring you up to date uh, how far we have talked about it. But for the sake of time, we are in a gospel of John the 11th chapter, the miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Dead for four days, decayed had got into his body. He was stinky, but God. raised him up Amen. so we brought the subject uh, last time and uh, Martha goes first and then she talks to Jesus I will bring you up to date about that talk and then she comes back to the house Jesus is still at the toll gate right. at the turnpike toll gate okay John 11 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Martha, her sister, secretly, saying, The master is come and call it for thee. As soon as she heard that, talk about Mary, she arose quickly, came unto Jesus. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily, went out, they all followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, saw him, she fell down at his feet. Underline the word, at his feet. Saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Same thing what Martha said. But now the conversation is totally different than Jesus and Martha. I will tell you why. And Jesus therefore saw her weeping. And the Jews who also weeping which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Another translation said that ticked him off. He was angry. I will tell you why he was angry. And he said. Where have you laid him? So just, just let, let, let just leave that one alone. So let's just go up to 33. All right? Go ahead and have your seats. Since I have a lot of good visitors here, and I don't want you to feel left out where I had uh, gone in this story, I'm just going to give you just a few highlights to bring you up to date. I'm going to take about six, seven minutes, and then I'm going to talk to Mary, talk about Mary about 30 minutes. So here we go. The hardest thing I have done in preaching for 40 years, 42 years, is this. When someone walks in my office, all tore up, crushed in their heart, Tears coming out of their eyes. And sometimes those tears are the tears from the heart. Now that's a good one right there. You can tweet that. Uh. Yeah, because I have seen some crocodile tears. They're, come on, you all. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody wants something, they got to put on a crocodile tears and play with your emotions and do all these things. But genuine tears. And they will tell you, ask you, what to do when God doesn't do what I ask him to do. They will quote a scripture, Jesus say, up till now you have not asked me anything. Ask. So that your joy be full and you ask instead of joy, sorrow has filled your heart and nobody has answered. What to do when God does 
doesn't move the way you want him to move. The time frame you want him to move. And so for those I have made one statement. He is the most high. Say most high. Most high. You are the most slow. So the most slow cannot tell the most high what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it. In other words, shut up. See, that's our problem. We tell God, uh, look here, he is not your errand boy. He's God, Lord Almighty. David learned his lesson. He said, my times are in your hands. What you mean my times are in your hand? Well, uh, King Saul poured oil on me and uh, in the presence of all my brothers, he said, uh, you the king and the whole hell broke loose and he was running for his life. Hiding in a cave, hiding behind the bush, going all over. And he wondered, <clears throat> I was fine. Nobody was chasing me. <laughs> so please, those of you, oh, I need a word of God. Is you crazy? You don't want a word. Because as soon as the word of God comes, word of God will be tried. And we fall apart when trouble and test and trial comes. So that was one of the things. So please, 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 please uh, trust God. After you pray, take your hands off and say, look here, God, you God. You are a sovereign God. You love me. You're not going to make a mistake. You are too wise to make a mistake, too powerful to let the devil win. And you love me too much to keep me weeping and crying. Have your way, Lord. So that was one lesson. Uh, next one, I got too much, but uh, uh, we talked about Martha last week. Martha came and started, uh, she, she was regret. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And so Jesus did one thing. Told her, it is not the program, it is the person. Her faith was in a program. On the last day, my brother, we rise. And Jesus said, girl, it's not the program, it is the person. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. He that believes in me will never die. And though he were dead, yet said he rise. Believe thou this? Yes. And then there's a one awesome statement I made last week. Yes, she just didn't come when she wanted to. Yes, her hope was gone. Yes, she was crying. Her dream turned into a nightmare. Oh God. But you know what? She didn't quit God. Like some of us. Things don't go your way. You're going to blame God and blame me. I ain't coming to church no more. I call, why are you coming to church? Oh, I'm going through. Uh -huh. So how ignorant can you be and still be breathing? You're going through. Don't you know devil want to isolate you and kill you and, 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 and you don't. So, so Martha, tired, disappointed, God. But I know one thing, you are the son of the living God, the true Messiah. You know what? I have a lot of questions, but you know what? I still believe you are the savior. Wow. So those who preach against Martha, uh, listen to this tape. I know preachers are bad. Yeah. They preach bad on Peter and, uh, and everybody else. And sister girl Martha, oh Lord Jesus, we wore her out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, 
whatever she went through she say you know what god uh uh i am glad since you here i be all right sometimes you got to look in the mirror uh, in the middle of trouble in the middle of trouble when you cry and there is no more tear you got to look up in the mirror and say you know what uh i'm all right yeah. i be all right I don't understand I have many questions very frustration but you know what I'm all right because I'm his child his eyes is on the sparrow and I know he watches over me I know I'll be all right I'm all jacked up now night will go god but I'll be all right some of the things you were jacked up in 2010 and you look now and say what what was wrong with me yes you be all right yes sir be all right my emotions are out of whack sometimes you blame your hormones oops 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 If you need to take a hormone pill go ahead and take a hormone pill but most of the time it is your faith way worrying a double minded man cannot receive anything from God you got to have a singleness of my mind no matter what i go through he said when i go to the flood the flood will go take me and i go to fire you are with god you are with me David say when my soul is overwhelmed take me to the rock that is higher than I and when you go to the rock your knees might be buckling on the rock but the rock under you is a bigger and better than the rock of Gibraltar he never shakes no There's Martha for you. Let's talk about my girl Mary. First of all, when Martha left from the same house, how come nobody moved? See, our problem you are read but you 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 waste your mind which is a terrible thing to do but you do it <laughs> why nobody moved when martha moved because you have a reputation of going here and there and everywhere else. hundred people are pulling you say so everybody know uh, she got to go do something that what stress means people pulling you in a thousand direction not you stress is always caused by some fools oh did i i'm sorry visitors uh, some fools <laughs> ain't got a job don't want a job no responsibility and here you are and they know you are a sucker for sad stories i know what to do i know which button to push yeah i am your savior and i come home i ain't going monday night prayer cuz i'm is too tired and a wednesday don't even ask me going here and there and everywhere now, uh, look here the hustlers they will figure it out you're not the only one on the list if they call you and if you don't answer or oh, number 2 oh, there's always sucker born every second but you the number 1 
I'm trying to behave with all these guests here. I'm trying to teach you all something. You quit being a savior. You can fix anything and everything. There are people who don't want nothing fixed. You fix something and they call you tomorrow. Uh, guess what, do? Uh, uh, can you help a brother out now? Get a job. Oh, all right. We got a visitor helping me. All right now. You know I'm right. So when Martha goes, nobody moves. Isn't that interesting? In a conversation, you don't find uh, uh, Jesus telling Martha, uh, where is Mary? Because everything is not written. But what you need to know, he wrote it. So she comes home. There are a whole lot of people. You know how you all do. I'm surprised Mary moved. I'm going to show it to her in a minute. But anyway, she moved. And she said, oh, Master. Wait a minute. Hold on. Sato told me to leave. How you perceive Jesus, that's how you will tell somebody else. Martha was a workaholic in a church with a mentality. Huh. He's a slave driver. Talk to me. It's not in my note. Y'all better get this. Uh, huh? uh, uh, I thought the Holy Ghost said in the beginning, and Jesus loved Lazarus. Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. How come she didn't come out and say, guess what? Your friend is at the toll gate. How do you represent Jesus? First of all, you ain't represent Jesus anyway. And by the way, I've been seeking God for a while. The Lord gave me an answer why this church is not growing. And it's not me. Hallelujah. <laughs> So there is only you left. <laughs> it's not me. You must be you. So on my anniversary, I'm going to preach a message. Why are we not growing? I ain't coming. Well, stay home. Stay home, stay home, stay home. By the way, we will celebrate just like a regular service. I'm the honor speaker, guest speaker. I know you wanted Coco to preach, but, uh, uh, but, but he said his service will be done in 15 minutes, so uh, we ain't going to have that. Because the food won't be ready till 1230. So if he let out at 11.15, uh, uh, oh, Sister Lee said, you all better stay in the church till 12.30. <laughs> and yes, we will receive a special offering for me. Amen. Amen. I don't receive nothing all year long, so you, you all better. If I ever help you, please. If I ever help you, keep. Mary! She got up. 
Isn't this something? Mary is cool. Mary is calm. Two sisters, two different personalities. Mary, she got up in a hurry. And all these people say, wait a minute, this child never gets up. So Mary got up. So everybody said, oh, oh, she must be going to the grave to, to cry. Let's just go. So they all. But for next 20 minutes, give me 20 minutes. I want to bring you a message about Mary and the feet of Jesus. Every time I see Mary, I see Mary and the feet of Jesus. So they everybody followed Jesus to the toll gate. But before I bring that about, let me take you back in a look the 10 chapter verse 39 you all know this story and jesus was there at martha and mary and lazarus's house and martha had cooked and mary in the beginning she was frying chicken But when she saw Jesus in the house, she dropped that drumstick in there and went and sat down at the feet of Jesus. Why do you think Martha got so jet? I can't be cooking greens and frying the chicken at the same time. What's wrong with you all? I'm going to watch my cornbread. Where is that girl? Move the curtain through the window. <laughs> you know, she might have spoke French. You don't know. Get yours. <laughs> but see, he's at the feet of Jesus. So that didn't work. Sign language didn't come. So here she comes. She is fussing with Jesus. She is at your feet. Kick her so she can get in the kitchen. As a matter of fact, you the one come to eat, and I know you eat at eleven thirty. Just a thought, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. And he said, no, if you want to do something, guess what? You ain't eating at 11.30. So if you want to eat, you better tell her. Isn't that Martha is always telling the Most High what to do? Because her schedule is totally different than Jesus' schedule. Tell her to come and help me. And Jesus said, girl, calm down. You forgot. I had said in Matthew 4 and 4, men shall not leave our bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He said, she has chosen the best part. One thing is needed. And I'm going, to ask, I'm going to prove it to you in the next 17 minutes. What is the best thing? I didn't say what is the best thing. 
Jesus said the best thing. He's not condemning the folks in the kitchen, neither do I. It has its place. But you could have fixed a sandwich. But no. You want to do all this full course meal. And now you want to blame Jesus and the pastor. Oh, Jesus and Mary. And Jesus said, hold up, girl, you got it wrong. She has chosen the best part. What is the best part? At the feet of Jesus. Not only at the feet of Jesus, but sitting there listening to everything what she is saying. Some of us are at feet of Jesus, but none of you are listening. It will not be taken away from her. That's what you see her first time. Mary. So here she comes now at the toll gate. She comes to Jesus. Jesus saw her. Same question. Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Wait a minute. So how come you, Jesus, didn't tell her what you told Martha? Same question. Shouldn't the same question have the same answer? But he does not answer her that. He does not. Martha's faith needed to be adjusted. Listen to this. But Mary's pain, her grief, her sorrow needed to be shared. There you go. Martha's theology needed to be adjusted. Her faith. Let me tell you all something. Why do you and Sister Levy always emphasize on the worshiping God? That's why I always say, come at 11. Don't come late. And trying to disturb everybody else who is standing there worshiping. You ready for this? You want to move Jesus without getting in a doctrinal teaching? Be a worshiper. How come he didn't cry when Martha came? Same question with Martha. Jesus didn't cry. Bearing on. Well, this and Jesus said this and this and this. Jesus said, shut up. Do you believe this? But when Mary came, Jesus remember, this is not the one banging the pots in the kitchen woman. This is the one sad at my feet. He doesn't answer her. And Bible says, Jesus wept. Wow. You want to get Jesus' emotion? He moves on behalf of the worshipers. God has emotions. Martha went, but when he saw Mary, the worshiper crying, he cried. Romans 12, 15 says, weep with those who weep. 
He didn't whip with Martha. You know why? Martha wasn't whipping. Martha too busy arguing. So my advice to you as a pastor is this. Trust him and quit arguing. Why you didn't do this and why you didn't do this thing? Because he don't want to answer you. Like I told you last week, he asked Job. I said, Job, you throw? He said, let me ask you a question. Where was you when I hung the sun and the moon? Where was you when I put all the stars? Where was you? Uh, Job said, oops. So now he moves with compassion. And Bible says that compassion came from deep inside. He cried. He moved with tears. That's the reason Bible says, David says, he got all my tears in a bottle. In the 70s, they used to sing a song, say, for those tears, I died. So when you cry, don't let anybody make a guilt on you. I say this thing at every funeral. I know some preachers say, why are you crying? Because my mama died. My daddy died. My brother died. My sister died. The one I love died. Huh? So Jesus is telling you, if you want to cry, Go ahead and cry. I will cry with you. I won't condemn you. Are you with me? Now, watch it. Look at the 10th chapter. Sit is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening. Now come here. She comes and she falls at the feet of Jesus. The feet. Where you are sitting and worshiping will be the feet you will need to hold on when everything is falling apart. That's why worshipers don't fall apart. It is the people always working. Boo, 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 boo. Again, I'm not saying it is wrong, but let me tell you something. Huh? Worshippers never fall apart. They never. She was holding on to the feet of Jesus. And the Lord, man, he started crying. Probably his tears fell on Mary. And everybody. Hmm. Oh, he's crying now, huh? Haters. Oh, oh, oh. Just, just two chapters before. He did a miracle, which we have never heard from the beginning of the world, opening the eyes of the blind man. Couldn't he do anything to keep this man from dying? Wait a minute. So why would you all crying? Come on. Come on. Come on. Professional criers. <laughs> oh, I have seen, oh, Lord Jehovah, I have seen at the graveyard, at the seen at the funeral. Lord God, ah! And just go outside and light up. How are you doing, girl? Let me see. Oh, you got to get up too early to play pull one on me. I knows you. You all have taught me well. I'm the best pastor because I watches you all. All the drama you all put on. I just take the notes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I got you. Five more minutes, five more minutes, then I'm done. Okay, so let us just leave this one alone. Mary at the feet of Jesus. Mary holding on to the feet of Jesus. Then we will raise Lazarus next Sunday. But let me take you one more time in the life of Mary. The last time it is mentioned about Mary. Lazarus is raised. He's good. He's good. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it. But I want you to go home and read John 12, 1 through 11 or 1 through 12. Again, Mary. Now watch it. After the resurrection of Jesus, 
you just come back to Bethany. Same house. Martha was serving. She hasn't changed yet. Even after the miracle, she hasn't changed it. Lazarus is just sitting there. Saying nothing. I will preach about Lazarus maybe Sunday after next. There's a feast going on. And here comes Mary. Get ready. Takes $30,000 worth perfume. Breaks it. Where? The same feet. Same feet. And you know Psalm 25 or 23 verse 5. For thou anoints my head with oil. But let me ask you a question. Who anoints your feet? As the tradition was, after Jesus died, all the other women came with a hundred pounds of spice and all the ointment to wrap him in all those spice. But I got one question. Why not anoint him when he's alive? Like the old folks used to say, give me my money. No, give me my flowers. Uh, <laughs> While I'm alive. While I'm alive. So she poured it. Wipe with her hair. Whoa. Number one, women are not allowed when the guys are eating. Culture. Number two, women are never allowed to take the hair down because the Bible says your long hair is your glory. Number three, you don't touch man's feet. And number four, you never wipe with your teeth. And she broke all the tradition worshiper listen to me worshiper breaks every tradition oh god i just made a home run and you don't even worshiper breaks every tradition every man oh you shouldn't do that yeah you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that worshiper said get away from me now watch it she did it jesus doesn't rebuke her Jesus will never rebuke a worshiper. He will cry with a worshiper. And the thief, Judas, was sitting there with his calculator. <laughs> he said, we could have fed all them hungry folks for a long time. Why waste? Everybody look at me. I've got two more minutes. Look at me. Those who are not worshipping will criticize the true worshipper. Why are you wasting your time and your money? Worshipping is never a waste of time or waste of money. I challenge you today. Be a worshiper. We could have fed the poor. And Jesus said, look here, dude, it's like this. Poor, you always got with you. Yes. But I'm not with you. And she had done it. Listen to this. He said, what she had done will be preached all over the world. We don't preach about Martha banging the kitchen. That's right. That's right. That's right. We hear 
about Mary. He said, wherever the gospel is being preached, you will hear about Mary. Mary sitting at my feet, listening. Mary holding on my feet when she needed help. You ready? Oh, God, I'm so to you. It's not in my note. But when I needed help. Would you all leave me talking to Peter and everybody else? So those who are hating the women, yeah. let me tell you something. Jesus said, all the disciples, when I needed you, it was Mary poor, the most expensive. And Bible say, she did what she could. Yeah. God will not ask you to give him something which he hasn't given you. She gave her best. And watch it. After that, it intensifies. He made the entry. They betrayed him. There's a last supper. You, it will come in a 12th chapter, 13th chapter. And all. The, and they hung him. Guess what? A little dab won't do you. That's why the most expensive perfume cost much. Put it on. Take a shower for two, three days and you still got it. But when she poured the whole bottle, pour the whole bottle. While they plucked his beard, he can smell. Mm what Mary did. When they beat his back while he's bruised with a crown. Jesus said, you know what? I can go through this because worshiper stood by me when everybody left me. Worshiper gave me what I needed. I can do it. Make me all you want to crucify me because when you crucify me I still feel the fragrance of Mary listen to this and he took a last breath <clears throat> he died with what a worshiper did to him my question is this how many worshipers we have at Covenant Family Church? I don't have to ask you after 22 years to come on time and worship. I don't have to ask you come Monday time and worship. I don't have to ask you Wednesday night come and worship. You know what? You're not a worshiper. Do you want to move God? In this new year, huh? be a worshiper. Because did the Jesus didn't say, and God is a spirit, and those who uh, cook for him. Those who serve for him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in the spirit. My question to you is this. God in the revelation said, for his pleasure, we are created. What is his greatest pleasure? He told Martha, she has taken a part which cannot be taken. My question to you is today, don't let this word fall to the ground. Would you let the Holy Ghost talk to you and say, could you come and worship? If you couldn't, he wouldn't ask you, but you could. Would you be like Mary or would you be like Martha? Would you be like Mary or would you be like Martha? You got to figure it out. And I'm not saying you cannot, cannot serve God in the kitchen or serving. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying this one is higher than this. We all need each other. But if you're always cooking, when do you have time to worship? And when you are always worshiping, when do you have time to serve? It's a combination. We all need together to come and worship. We all need together to serve. We need all together 
so God can get what he has created us for. Amen. So I'm done with Mary. We're going to raise Lazarus next Sunday. Thank you.